the start of the War of 1812, the United States suffered severe reverses on land, but scored a string of stunning successes on the high seas. To avenge this embarrassment and protect its commerce, in 1813 the British sent several fleets to blockade America's ports and, if possible, destroy America's warships and naval bases. In June of 1813, one such fleet launched an attack on the defenses of the Gosport Navy Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia, seat of American naval power in the south. This presentation gives an overview of the major sites in Portsmouth that merit inclusion in the Star-Spangled Banner Trail. Hello, my name is Gregory Etroff of the Portsmouth History Commission. I'm speaking to you from the beach of Craney Island, site of one of America's most decisive victories of the War of 1812. Today I'll be taking you through this and several other important Portsmouth sites uh, from the War of 1812, sometimes also called the Second American War of Independence showing Portsmouth's important contribution to America's defense in that war and throughout American history. We're here in Fort Nelson Park next to Naval Medical Center Portsmouth, better known as the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. Established in 1827, the hospital took in its first patients in 1830, serving as the oldest continuously functioning naval hospital in the United States. Our interest lies in an earlier incarnation of this site, though. Here at Hospital Point, the Elizabeth River is at its narrowest below the Norfolk Navy Yard. During the American Revolution, Virginia forces built Fort Nelson, a three-sided redan, to protect what was then the Gosport shipyard from British attack. The British responded by landing about a mile away, marching overland and attacking the unprotected rear of the fort. The fort and Portsmouth itself fell easily, and Portsmouth was a British base for raids deep into Virginia for the next two years. During the War of 1812, American forces were better prepared. To protect what was now the Gosport Naval Shipyard, General Robert Taylor of Norfolk constructed more elaborate defenses. A stronger Fort Nelson here at Hospital Point, Fort Norfolk across the river, and an iron chain between them. Taylor also established an outpost on Craney Island and a barrier of ships across the mouth of the Elizabeth River. Any attacking British force would have to deal with this barrier before they could even attempt assault on the inner fortifications. A mixed force of regular army soldiers, Virginia militia, and sailors and marines detached from the USS Constellation, perhaps 750 in all, defended the Craney Island fortifications. In 1813, a fleet under Admiral Sir George Cockburn blockaded the Chesapeake Bay, trapping the American frigate USS Constellation in the Elizabeth River. Cockburn planned to eliminate this ship and the Navy Yard by capturing Portsmouth. Hoping to duplicate the successful British invasion of 1779, Cockburn planned a two-pronged assault on the Craney Island defenses. One force would make an amphibious landing on the beach using barges, while the other would land at Hoffler Creek, march overland, and strike the defenders from the rear. On June 22, 1813, 50 British barges, led by the 52-foot centipede, rode towards this beach. Captain Arthur Emerson of the Portsmouth Light Artillery commanded the defenders who faced the British amphibious assault. Waiting until the enemy barges got well into range, he yelled, Now, my brave boys, are you ready? Fire! The British never reached the beach. Several barges were sunk, and the rest retreated to the safety of the fleet. The British took heavy casualties, including Captain John M. Hanshit, the illegitimate son of King George III. The Americans didn't lose a man. Here at Hoffler Creek, some 700 of His Majesty's soldiers, Royal Marines, and independent companies of foreigners, French prisoners who chose British service rather than a long stint in prison barges, landed for an attack on the rear defenses of Craney Island. They met heavy American resistance among the swamps and creeks of the area and were forced to retreat with heavy losses. Estimates of the numbers involved and British casualties vary widely, but it's probably not too far off to say that more than 2,000 British soldiers attacked about 750 Americans, suffering more than 200 casualties without killing a single American defender. Though on a smaller scale, this was as complete and overwhelming a victory for the Americans as General Jackson's famous Battle of New Orleans. Today, the British landing site is part of the Hoffler Creek Wildlife Preserve, a 142-acre site dedicated to environmental preservation, education, research, and recreation consistent with good stewardship. The site is open to the public year-round. Portsmouth has many other sites connected to the War of 1812 as well. We're standing on Fort Lane, the road to old Fort Nelson, now. Behind me you see the gates to Cedar Grove Cemetery, the oldest city-run cemetery in Portsmouth. Here you can find the graves of men who defended this country from the War of 1812 through World War II.
we're standing in the plot of the Emerson family, at the grave of Captain Arthur Emerson of the Portsmouth Light Artillery. Like many militia officers of the period, Emerson was a prominent man in his community and its civic affairs, serving as clerk of the Portsmouth Court until his death in 1842. Here in Glasgow Street Park, we find the grave of William Ball, Jr., adjutant of the 4th Regiment of Virginia Militia, the only American combat fatality of the Craney Island campaign. He was killed by friendly fire, shot by a sentinel at Fort Nelson weeks before the British landing. We're standing in front of the Ball House, a 1784 Dutch colonial style home used as a barracks during the War of 1812. You'll note the unusual roof design. This was because of colonial tax laws. Homes were taxed on the number of floors of living space below the gable. So this home had two roofs, the usual shallowly pitched one, and then another at an almost 90 degree angle to the ground. Because of this, they could tell the tax man that the house had only one floor of living space in an attic, but that second floor had as much room as any ordinary floor. Because of this, this style was also known as Tax Dodger. We're standing in front of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum, celebrating the history of what is now the Norfolk Naval Shipyard and Portsmouth's contribution to American maritime history in general. Inside, you'll find exhibits on all of America's major wars from the American Revolution to the present day, including the War of 1812. Here you will find contemporary artifacts from the period, models of ships used during the conflict, weapons, documents and photographs, and interactive exhibits. At the High Street Ferry Landing, visitors can sign up for boat tours of the Elizabeth River, including views of the shipyard and the Craney Island battle site. We're in Trinity Episcopal Church, formerly Portsmouth Parish Church, the oldest congregation in the city of Portsmouth. Dating to 1762, only 10 years after the founding of the city and its first tavern. Many of the defenders of Portsmouth attended services here during the War of 1812, including Captain Arthur Emerson, commander of the Portsmouth Light Artillery. Emerson's father had, in fact, been pastor of this congregation in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. To my left, a window is dedicated to the Emerson family. Here we have the Star Spangled Banner the 15 star, 15 strike flag that flew over American installations during the War of 1812. Originally, a new star and new strike was to be added to the flag for each new state, but they soon realized that eventually the body of the flag would look like an undifferentiated pink mass if they continued to do this, and so it was resolved to only include the 13 stripes representing the 13 original states and a new star for each new state. This is the tomb of Commodore James Barron, one of the most senior and controversial figures in the United States Navy during the War of 1812. A hero of the quasi-war with France in the 1790s, Barron rose to command the United States frigate Chesapeake in 1807. On a shakedown voyage, the Chesapeake was hailed by the British ship HMS Leopard, which demanded permission to board and look for British deserters. When Barron refused, the Leopard opened fire, disabling the Chesapeake and forcing Barron to surrender. The British then boarded and took off several American sailors claiming that they were deserters from the Royal Navy. This and other similar violations of American neutral shipping rights was one of the major causes of the War of 1812. Controversy continued to follow Barron after the War of 1812, culminating in his famous duel with Commodore Stephen Decatur in 1820. Barron was wounded in the leg in that fight while Decatur was killed. In spite of these controversies, Barron rose to become the senior most officer in the United States Navy from 1839 to his death in 1851. At the corner of High and Court Streets by the 1846 courthouse, visitors can see a cannon from the War of 1812 buried to muzzle down. Tempting as it may be to dismiss it as just a hitching post from the horse and buggy era, there is a more serious meaning here. Burying a gun in this way represented the death of an officer.
The English founded Jamestown in 1607. By 1620, they were repairing ships here in what would, in the late colonial era, become the Gosport Shipyard. Virginia seized the yard in 1776, then leased and eventually sold it to the federal government after the establishment of the Union. The USS Chesapeake was built here in the 1790s, and many of the ships that fought in the War of 1812 came here for repairs. It was, and still is, one of the most important shipyards in the United States, and it was the prospect of capturing this glittering prize that led the British to attack Craney Island in 1813. After the war, the shipyard maintained its primary importance. Here you can find dry dock number one, the oldest dry dock in North America. Here the USS Merrimack became the CSS Virginia, the first ironclad warship to see combat. Here the Navy built its first battleship, the USS Texas. The shipyard is still an active facility, but across the street from quarters number one, the Commandant's house, Gosport Park is open to the public. Along with Trophy Point Park and the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum, it celebrates the role of what is now the Norfolk Naval Shipyard in America's defense from the age of bronze smoothbores to trident missiles. This tour has only scratched the surface of Portsmouth, one of Virginia's hidden treasures. We encourage you to visit these sites and the many other historically significant sites in this city and see for yourself how Portsmouth shaped American history.